crazy. What's up, what's up? Back again. How's everybody doing? I hope um, hope you guys are all doing okay. As you can see, it uh, seems like uh, the videos that I put out there are coming, are coming at a much more frequent pace and that's because we are nearing launch, right? And so it's best that I get, out, get as much information out there to the public who is interested in, te in Tezos as I can. And so in this installment, we're gonna be going over the um, we're going to do an overview of the Tezos ICO, all right? Um, how one would have contributed to the Tezos ICO and how they're going to receive their Tezos tokens upon launch, okay? And we're also going to highlight a particular wallet, okay? Um, known as uh, Tezbox, which is similar to MetaMask. MetaMask will, or uh, not MetaMask, but the Tezbox, which is similar to MetaMask, a lot of a lot of you are familiar with that uh, with that um, wallet. <clears throat> will have the functions and the features that are necessary for restoring the private keys that one received <laughs> and hopefully put in for safe keeping, keeping after the ICO, okay? And so let's get into it. All right, so let's get started with the, uh, <clears throat> with the overview of the uh, Tezos ICO, okay? So back in, I think it was either June or July, okay? It was one of those, but starting on the first of either one of those months, running for 12 days, the Tezos ICO was open. They accepted Bitcoin and Ethereum for the most part. And this was the results of that fundraiser. It was about 2000 or $232 million raised in both Ethereum and Bitcoin, which is now about a billion dollars for development, marketing, and advertising. Oh yeah, proof of stake is a big deal. Tezos is a big deal. Anyways, let's get into it. And so, there's a couple ways that it, that this could have went down for you, okay? Here in this screenshot, what you notice is that there's an offline version or an online version, okay? With the offline version, it, obviously it was more secure and it involved downloading the fundraiser page to a safe um, and secure USB stick, right? But let's say you didn't do the, you did not do the uh, uh, the USB version. and said you went with the online version. Okay, cool. Then that would have showed you something like this. All right, you would have created an email, a password, and then a confirmation password. Okay, and you would have hit next right here. All right. Moving on. After hitting next, it would have give you a mnemonic a mnemonic key or a mnemonic a, a private key. Okay. All right, you would have either wrote this down, put it on a notepad or something on your computer, and saved it to a uh, a secure and brand new USB stick, or simply wrote it down on a piece of paper and put it and put it somewhere for safekeeping. Okay. Either way, you better have done one of those two things. It also would have generated a public hash right here. Okay. All right, and then you would have you would have clicked save wallet all right so you want to save your mnemonic password or your your, your mnemonic uh, phrase it's 15 words in all I believe okay either on a secure USB stick or you would have written it down on a piece of paper or put it onto a, like a notepad printed it out and then and and then from there deleted all traces of this mnemonic key here from from your device all right moving on after saving the wallet, it would have generated one for you, okay? And it would have looked, it would have looked something like this. Here's a wallet number, all right? It would have showed you again your 15-word secret key, right? You can just simply print all of this out. <clears throat> That's what I would have did. I would have printed this out, and then I would have deleted this from from um, 
from the files of my computer. So you get a you get a you got a wallet number and then you got a public key hash, okay? And then it would have Tezos would have directed you to the um, addresses, the uh, current or the um, cryptocurrency addresses that they were accepting as contributions, right? And so, as you've seen here on this page, <clears throat> Tezos accepted sixty five thousand seven hundred and three Bitcoin and three hundred sixty one thousand three hundred sixty one thousand one hundred twenty two Ethereum. That's what contributors sent to the Tezos ICO and these are the addresses so here's the Bitcoin address that you would have sent right and for the ethereum contribution contribution you had you would have sent it to this address along with the transaction data okay and whatever gas limit there may have been Let's give me one second okay so the next thing you would have done Yeah, so you would have, exactly, so you would have, at this point, so you've saved your wallet, now you're going to back your wallet up, okay? So the wallet that it gave you, that PDF file that it gave you, right? So this here, there's your wallet number, and there's your public key hash, right? On this next page, you would have put your wallet number, and then the password, that you use to create the account here right boom all right and that would have and that would verify your backup from there it would have took you to the contribution page okay this here as you can see you have a option for uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum okay and so as you can see it says up here contribute with Bitcoin right and there's send contributions to this is the address that was located on the wallet that you downloaded and then it would show it you know there's also an option for Ethereum okay the Ethereum um, of the Ethereum address along with the transaction data that it needed and the gas limit alright and then you would have just simply clicked contribute to ether, uh, uh, contribute ether to for 600 XCZ, right? And you would have invested in the ICO at that point, okay? From there, <clears throat> you would get a page that looks like this. And the public key hash that is on the wallet that was generated during uh, uh, generated for you during the ICO, you would simply have put it there and hit search. After a few hours, it would have it, it would have um, given you it, it would have uh, verified that hey yeah you you've contributed you know x amount of ether x amount of bitcoin and we owe this public key okay this public key this amount of XTZs upon launch right okay so now let's talk about how we're going to receive our tezzies upon launch okay so just to be clear this is not a um a follow-up to my last video that dealt with uh, that where we talked about delegation and baking okay we all know that that's a complicated process and it should be and Tezos should not be apologetic for that process being complex and complicated because you just don't want anybody running nodes and validating blocks and 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 Tezos you need to know that the people that are going to be validating the chain and securing the chain know exactly know exactly how to do so and why it's being done okay there's a philosophy behind Tezos all right and there's an overall and general philosophy behind a uh, proof of proof of stake this is one of the main reasons why ethereum is aggressively trying to move to proof of stake bitcoin yet to be known probably not going to happen with the governance issues on both platforms who knows who knows maybe maybe ethereum might make it to proof of stake i'm not sure yet okay but you got to remember tezos has a governance you know uh, mechanism built into its core protocol so when issues such as this comes up 
It's just a simple vote, right? And the majority rent wins. You can hypothetically or theoretically even say that Tezos can switch to complete proof of work, right? This is a self amending cryptographic ledger. It can take on and mimic any blockchain out there. And that's kind of why they call it one of the last blockchains. I mean, you know, yeah, the last blockchain. Because Tezos can always be changed to um, mimic any blockchain that you can think of with any type of features and any type of parameters through its amending process, okay? All right? With OCaml and with formal verification and all those things still being a part of whatever Tezos might morph into, okay? But without getting into too much of that, let's talk about how we're going to get our ICO tokens, okay? Right? So, according to some, uh, the core development team is currently developing a wallet, okay? I don't have much information on that. But um, that, 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 that may be, okay, and most likely will be an option for um, at least the ICO participants to uh, receive um, the tokens that they were, uh, the tokens in exchange for, they, for their Bitcoin or Ethereum contributions that I showed you in the beginning of this video, okay? However, in the meantime, I do know this for sure. Steven Andrews, who is an awesome developer, awesome guy, really good to talk to, very intelligent, okay, and extremely technical, and knows exactly how the Tezos blockchain works, is de ha has developed, okay, a decentralized application that is similar to MetaMask. A lot of you guys are familiar with MetaMask, and you know exactly how it works, okay? Tezbox is no different, okay? So let's check it out. So from here... All right, let me, let me find, do, do, do. Okay, so first off, here's Tezos.help, okay? You see this right here? This right here, www.tezos.help, is where you can find all of these categories. Delegation, Mickelson, which is the smart contracts language, block explorers, and wallets, right? So we're going to go to wallets. <clears throat> here's the test box, okay? Here's test box. Boom, right here. I already got it pulled up, so instead of opening up a bunch of different tabs, I'm just gonna go here. Okay, and so let's go. Let's check out how we get test box. Okay, cool. So here I am in my extensions. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get more extensions. All right, I'm gonna type in test box right here. This wallet is gonna have a lot of good, uh, a lot of um, features and functions as time goes on. Uh, one, one thing to note here, Tezos, its value really comes from the uh, technology and the decentralized applications over time, okay? Over time. Tezos, in my opinion, for some may be a short-term hold, but you're only shorting yourself. Um, Tezos's real value is, you know, a year, two, three years down the road, all right? That's when you're gonna see big 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 time returns by that time though you might have you know the entire globe uh, you know a percentage of world economic activity will be done and facilitated through cryptocurrency so selling your tezzies will be like it's it's uh, what's the word i'm looking for selling tezzies or selling bitcoin or selling anything else for a paper currency would almost be it would kind of defeat the purpose right it just wouldn't make any sense so right now these things are being used as investment vehicles but what you have to understand is that blockchain technology right that underlines cryptocurrencies is looking to replace fiat currencies okay so depending on what what um what blockchain or what decentralized application, if it has some type of token or what cryptocurrency you're you're really into, uh, depending on that, it, it you know that that's going to decide the nature of it will decide if it's an appreciation type of token or coin or is if if it's is it an everyday use type coin, okay? And Tezos. The, the highest unit of a Tez, all right, a whole, a whole, a whole, you know, a single, a single coin in Tezos is referred to as a Tez, right? Whereas the lowest unit or the smallest unit of a Tez 
is uh, referred to as just a cent because it's denoted uh, to two decimal places. Unlike Bitcoin that has like freaking 20. No, like nine or something like that. And it's lowest unit being a Satoshi. So, boom. Come on now. There we go. Let me make it. Do boom, boom. Hate tabs. Like Arthur, like Arthur Brightman says, dude, more lines of code doesn't mean a better blockchain. You know, you really want less lines of code. Why have more tabs? He's right about that, dude. Too much of anything is bad for you. Everything in moderation. Okay, yeah, so we're there. All right, cool. So add to Chrome. That's what we're going to do. We're going to add this to Chrome, okay? Bow. Add extension. Boom, it pops right up next to all of that MetaMask wallet everybody knows so much about. All right? Create or restore test box. Now, I have a, a test box uh a test box wallet already all right but you can create as many of these things as you want all right so for the purpose of this video we're gonna create one okay here's a mnemonic password or uh, a seed phrase okay this is a private fucking key basically all right so what you want to do with this is just like in the ICO or with any other blockchain whenever you create an account it's gonna give you some type of private key all right this is never gonna be seen again for this password that I put here. The only person that ever is ever gonna know this is me, okay? And so I'm gonna copy and paste this, all right? Boom, copy, all right? I'm gonna paste this somewhere, I'm gonna print it out as a PDF. I'm gonna delete the file from my computer, all right? So moving on. So now you gotta create your password, all right? So let's do that. Password set. I got my password here. All right. Before I create the uh, create test box, I got the password here. All right. And I got that copy, and it's in a safe place. It's already deleted off my computer in theory. Okay. Let's create the test box. Boom. Boom. Ah, look at that. A hundred thousand tesies. Now, don't get excited. Okay. This is what, what you see here is you see a hundred thousand tesis okay this is for alpha net purposes all right when you create a test box this is going to have a zero balance until you fund it but the point of this video remember is to you know the whole purpose of the video is to um instruct or inform all those in the ico and people looking to obtain tesis or especially those for in, in the ico on how they can receive their tesis during the allocation or the token allocation event, okay? Now, what I have been told is that upon launch, tes, te, the test box, this thing here, this decentralized application, this wallet that you can get from the Google Chrome store for free, upon launch will be capable or have the options for restoring the private keys that you received during the ICO okay so for participants in the ICO you can use the test box upon launch right right to restore the private keys that you were given during the ICO that are on a PDF that you hopefully have saved okay right that's awesome so here is a this is this is one of the avenues one can take that um, um, if they had participated in the ICO and they've been wondering, well, how am I going to get my tokens? Is there an official wallet? Is there a decentralized application like MetaMask or Tezbox? Which there is. Yes, there is. And Tezbox will be ready and will have this functionality. It will have this feature for those who participated in the ICO to restore those private keys to the Tezbox wallet that you can get right here, right now at the Google, uh, you know, as an extension in Google Chrome, right? It will have, it, it will be able to restore those private keys. That is awesome. Let's look at some of the other features that Tezbox has. All right, and so 
And so back to the Tezbox wallet. Give me a second here. Okay, there we go. Right, and so um, like I was saying, uh, Stephen Andrews, uh, the developer of Tezbox, they're currently working on a feature for Tezbox, which I just explained, where you can basically set an address that you own within the Tezbox as a delegate. This feature is still in development, okay? However, for the ICO participants and things like that, um, upon launch, when Tezos launches, the test box will be able to or will have features and have the function and have the functions that can that will be able to restore the private keys that you created in the ICO. And from there, you can use the test box wallet to send, receive, write uh, decentralized applications in. Like it's basically a fully functional wallet from the get go and you can download it now. You know, and so I think that's really important for people to know. Again, let me let me say that again. For those who have participated in the ICF and who are wondering how they're gonna receive their Tezies during the allocate the token allocation event, this wallet right here, Tezbox, okay, that you can get from the Google Chrome store or, or that you can get as an extension from Google Chrome. It functions just like MetaMask. For those who participate in the ICO, it's going to have a function and have features that um, will give you the ability to restore the private keys that you were given during the ICO. And you can receive your Tezzies during the allocation, uh, the allocation event right to this Tezbox wallet. Okay, And in the future, for those who do not want to set up a node and, does it, and who don't want to use a third-party service such as you know, uh, Tezzy Gator, My Crypto Delegate, or anything like that, Tezbox is going to have a feature where you can be at, where where you can um, set a lowercase TZ or a delegation account as the baker for this main account that you can then fund and you have control over that. So then you can become your own baker, right? So you don't have to use a third party service and you also don't have to run a node, right? The more nodes, the better, in my opinion. Because this is how you secure the network. This is how transactions flow through. And this is how you avoid the network from breaking in half. So, with all that being said, the Tezbox wallet upon launch. And if you're not running your own node, my crypto delegate or uh, Tezzy Gator. And as rumor has it, Tezos community is developing a community uh, delegation services where all the proceeds will go to community activities. These are third party delegators. Choose them. You can choose them right from your Tezbox wallet as your delegators. So you can at least stake and grow your stake in Tezos without necessarily baking, right? So again, right, you have the Tezbox uh, you have the Tezbox um, decentralized application, the wallet here, that you can get from the Chrome store or, or from uh, Google Chrome as an extension, just like MetaMask. And for the ICO participants, it's going to have the features and the functionality to restore your private keys and receive Tezzies in exchange for the Bitcoin or Ethereum that you had sent to Tezos during the ICO. Secondly, for those who open up a Tezbox account wallet because their mom, you know, has some Tezzies and they want to send them some, they can use this wallet, right, to to receive those Tezzies. And in the future, they can even they can even set a delegate that they own the private keys to. A delegate is the baker, right? They can set a delegate or a baker that they own the private keys to right within this wallet. Okay? And they can bake on their own. Or, like I said, they can choose one of these third-party services, Tezzy Gator or My Crypto Delegate, and I'm pretty sure both um, the way that the way that the proof of stake algorithm works and and Tezos, um, all delegators and all bakers are incentivized and put up bonds that they'll forfeit that that they will forfeit if um, um, in, in the case of double signing or uh, double baking. So that's how we secure the network and that's how we validate chains in Tezos to a certain extent. All right. Well, that's it for today. I hope to see you guys back real soon. Um, I don't really know where I'm going to go next with this, but it's going to be somewhere along the lines of, uh, of what we talked about today. But I highly encourage you guys to go here.
Tezos.help, okay? At Tezos.help, you can find all of this good stuff. Delegation. It explain. you know, here, here goes, um, you know, my crypto delegate, Mickelson, will go through, um, you know, smart contracts and things like that. Block explorers, all right? And wallets. Tezbox, well, we just went over, well, over it. Tezos.blue, as you can see, available for Google Play and and Microsoft, uh, um, get it from Microsoft. I guess that's a de that's a Windows. Here's Android and Windows right here. Tez Wallet, right? I believe that's an iOS iOS supported wallet, along with Tezlet. And so there you go. I hope this video uh, was informative. I hope it helps you guys out. And happy lunch. We call it lunch for a reason. And Tezos are known as tacos. But you wouldn't know that unless you knew that. May the glory of Tezos live.